it's good to be back with you again. Today, we're going to talk about making a comfort basket. Quite an interesting thought in these times. But I want to start with uh, one of my favorite scriptures from Psalms 37, 3, where God says, settle in the land and find a safe pasture. This is quite an unsettling time for sure. And any unsettling or unexpected time or time when you're antsy, can't settle down, walking around, to have something prepared ahead of time to go to for comfort is quite productive and can shorten your length of time of being in stress you don't want. God said, settle in the land and find a safe pasture, meaning find comfort, nutrition, rest. Pastures give a lot of things and they're full of nutrients of all kinds. So why would I recommend a comfort basket for you today? Well, I've used it for years. I've taught it to my clients. I've taught it in retreat settings. And it works because it brings you to a center point. It brings you to a focus. And it relieves your mind because you become occupied with something that helps you remember pleasant things, things that brought you joy, things that touched your heart. The Creator has a hope for each of us and that is that we know ourselves and that we know our soul. But to do that, we do have to settle, be quiet, and learn to listen. Comforting oneself is foreign in our culture. We much prefer distractions, TV, playing card games, playing computer games, anything to distract us. Comfort is a whole different mechanism. Many of you have a devotion, set aside reading time, meditation. That's beautiful. Please keep that up. That is a profound comfort at this time. If you do it once a week, you do it daily, it doesn't matter how much you do it. That is a comfort. But this is going to focus on when you don't use your brain, when you don't have to think and interpret or process. This focuses on experiencing comfort. What if for a moment you could slip into a sublime space where there is nothing to do and there is nothing you have to be? Now you're gonna be a lot more creative than I am about what I show you today as samples about what to put in a comfort basket and why to do it. And I've been amazed what people have come up with and how creative they have been over the years. I do recommend that you include one of six items following the six senses. There's a slide now showing on the screen that addresses the six senses. You're used to hearing about the five, but we have found there is a sixth we should not ignore. Touch, taste, smell, hearing, seeing, and heart space. Things that bring emotional or spiritual connection and comfort. Those are the six senses. Now, you can put four in your basket. You can put all six in your basket. You can put 12 in your basket. It's just recommended you have at least four to six in your basket to go to at a time of just needing pure comfort. Now, I know you're not going to walk around your house because all of us put things in our homes and in particular rooms sometimes of things that bring us comfort, bring, that bring pleasure, artwork, something the grandchild gave us, something our child gave us, something a friend gave us, a piece of artwork we like to touch. Well, you're not going to walk around your house and say, I'm going to stand here for a few minutes and I'm going to focus on this and let it come for me. No, we don't do that. <laughs> we surround ourselves with it, but we never settle into that sublime space of being nothing and having no agenda, and that's what this comfort basket is about. Now, you can use a tray if you wish. You can use a cardboard box, or you can use a basket. Today, I'm gonna to give you samples of things to think about putting in your comfort basket. They'll all overlap, so when you say, oh, but that's a sensor. Yeah, that's a seeing, that's also a hearing. It's okay, they're supposed to overlap. We're an integrated human being. 
but I'm going to cover all six senses for you. I'm going to start with touch, texture, cloth. I just love satin. I love its feel. Sometimes we put it up against our cheek. Love to sleep on a satin pillowcase. A piece of maybe you got a stuffed toy from your great niece and you keep it because it reminds you of her and just to squeeze it and touch it feels good. Those are things we might put in our basket. Touchy, let's talk about touch stones. When I first came to the Church of the Palms, when I joined, they gave me a little glass cross. I keep it in my comfort basket. I touch it, I hold it. Once in a while, I've been known to carry it in my pocket. That's a touchstone for me. That's something I touch that has a reminder. You'll notice that it touches my emotional heart space too. This is Max's, and this is from the ocean. Max loves it because he rubs his thumb in it. Remember those worry stones we used to have as teenagers? And sometimes now we'll pop pack a worry stone in our pocket. But that touching has a sensation that touches every cell in our body out of memory and pleasure and the ocean waves and the experience you had there. Other things to touch might be something out of nature that you hear. These are Australian bottle tree pods. They're from Australia. They've been transplanted to here when Sun City was built. You put them all together and they rattle. And they probably were music makers, if not rattles for babies. I keep one in there because I love finding new nature things to touch and to see. I keep this very close. It's a sand dollar. There's a whole historical myth about all of the dots and the things and what they mean for people to learn. But that's not what this is about for me. This is about a sabbatical I took to the ocean for three months and what restorative experiences I had sitting in the sand, sitting in the grass. And I brought two sand dollars back with me and it takes me back there immediately. Another thing from the ocean, shells, all kinds, all shapes, thinking about the vastness of creation things I can't imagine about how it got created, how I stayed alive, what goes on that I don't know about, the mystery. This brings me to mystery. I've got something from the farm we moved from. It's a turkey feather. Reminds me of the farm and it's in my comfort basket. Taste. Now, what are we gonna do for that? Well, I have a little jar here, a little container, and I'm going to open it up. And I prepare it ahead of time, and I don't partake of it all at once when I sit with my basket. But let me dump it out. Let's see what's in there. Oh my goodness. I've got some graham crackers, some almonds, some craisins, Hershey's Kisses. That's my little taste basket. My little taste of nature, taste of things made in a factory. Might put a cookie in there, but that's a taste sensation. It's very fascinating that taste can happen for us by symbol and by smell, not by literalization. When I worked with post-traumatic stress disorder clients, Smell was extremely important because smell brought very painful memories often. And one thing we have found over the years in therapy is that there are two smells that bring pleasant memories to 99.9% .9 of the people. And one is cinnamon. Cinnamon and a cinnamon stick always brings a sense of you either smell apple pie or you smell cinnamon rolls or it is a very soothing thing to people. So I keep a little cinnamon. Another is vanilla. Vanilla is in almost all baking products. Just take a little cotton ball, 
keep it in a little container, and you've got vanilla to smell. Those two smells will take you to very pleasant memories and places pretty quick and are very delightful. Another piece of smell that involves taste is um, I keep dry ginger. And if you just bite it off, it instantly creates a smell of ginger and you have the taste of ginger. And ginger is known as a cleansing, healing piece of fruit in nature. So that's just something that I choose to keep along. How about this idea? I bet you have, when we move and when we think about taste, we can't help but move to, we did the smells. You know what's in this little sack? This little handkerchief has got my favorite perfume on it. Just delightful. You could use a stiff piece of cardboard. Have you ever gotten a letter in the mail and somebody sprayed it with cologne or sprayed it with, with perfume? We used to do that when we were dating. Thought that was really neat to get a letter that had fragrance. You can have that in your bag for a sense of smell. Or maybe you just keep some perfume in there. Whatever works for you. Now, all of those seem to be connected. Well, the others seem connected too because we're gonna to touch on hearing and seeing and every one of them is gonna to touch the heart space at the same time. So as I move to hearing, I like to start a focus time, whether it's my prayer or whether I'm going to my comfort basket. I like to start it by acknowledging it. And I just happen to have a little chime that tells me I'm setting this time aside. This is my time. And kind of a signal to the household of I'm not interruptible. Music, CDs. Now see, I'm a, still a CD player. I'm not up to snuff like a lot of you with your phones that have your music on it and you just put in your earphones and you can listen. Um, so I carry CD player and music to go with it for my gift comfort box of gift to myself. I also have a string of beads here. Now, why would I have a string of beads and why would that be important? Well, we do know that the Catholic tradition has prayer beads. The Episcopals use prayer beads. What you haven't realized, it's become quite a thing and people are making prayer bead chains for people they love. A friend made this for me and she picked particular stones that describe my personality. What I use it for is when I choose to think about my family, I hold it and just move down the beads, just thinking about them one by one. And it's just very sense of calm joy and surrounded by love. You can use your beads however you wish. I'm very visual. And this piece sits right above my head. And it says, imagination is everything. I've owned it for years. It was given to me by a friend, but I think we are innately born with such profound creativity. And every time I touch this, if I pick it up to take it and use it in my comfort basket, I'm reminded that we are creator's design, that we have the holy in us as well as the chance to be an example of holy to another and it just takes opening our heart which is merely opening your imagination so that's very visual and important to me i'm kind of moving back again because i'm moving to a sense of smell and i'm moving backward to smell because to see the flame is a sight. If you have a big candle and you hear the little sparks, it's a hearing. And it also, you can pick a fragrance. In this day and time, 
you can go get little vials for aromatherapy and pick out the fragrances you want and just open it up for a smell. But some people like to watch the flame burn, like to hear the flame crackle a little, and want it to have it for fragrance as well. How about some pictures of people I love? Pick whom you wish. Keep them close. See their smiles. Remember who they are, when it was taken. Any kind of photo of the people you love. Picture of a favorite place you visited. Another option to put in for seeing. And I don't know about you, but when you look at places you've been, I had the privilege of going to Russia. And when you look at places you've been, you suddenly can hear the sounds of where you were in the street where you walked or, or the environment you were in. So it triggers other senses as well. So maybe a picture of where you've been. I'm gonna open the one of heart space with a very particular piece of pottery. I did this at a retreat, it's mine with my eyes closed and did not know what I was making. I was to work with the clay and the assignment was think about yourself and the divine and what might represent that. I'm not particularly artistic and so I wasn't really sure what my design would look like. And when I opened my eyes, behold, there is one figure holding the other. I was astounded. <laughs> this is one of my favorite pieces in life because it reminds me I'm never alone. God is always with me, always has been, in fact knew me before I was born. And so this is a profound piece in my comfort basket. And you can buy this clay. It's called non-fire clay. You can get it at Michael's or art stores and you don't have to put it in the oven, it will self-harden and never crack. Heart space. We have an adopted family, and when Rosie, who's now 20, was seven years old, she hand-stitched this little star for Christmas for her poppy and me. And it sits right up there with our very precious things. It's tactile, it's a comfort. It was her sharing Christmas with us. So that's a very important piece for me to touch. Our son, when he was in Boy Scouts, brought home for Mother's Day one year, a star with hope burnt in the center for both of us. That is a very sentimental, heart-filling, loving piece of connection that touches our spiritual connection and our heart space. You can use quotes on cards to put in there. Here's a delightful quote from a friend from Roya, written to me just before we went on healthy hiatus for COVID. No winter lasts forever. No spring skips its turn. May love fill you during this time and may it be a great spiritual opportunity. Little did she know that what she wrote in that card has become a motto to hang on to with what she shared with me in this hand-drawn card she picked from an artist. I also keep the message, Psalms, Proverbs, and New Testament in my comfort Bible, basket, sorry. I keep this little Bible because I go to the Psalms more than I go to anything. The second thing I go to is Proverbs, the third is Isaiah. Then I'll go to the New Testament. <laughs> but this has the three components I like the most about the scriptures. And so I keep it in there because sometimes I do want to return to things that have touched me deeply. And I keep quotes. That's something you can put in there. 
here's my focus for life, and I borrow it from the Benedictines, whom I respect greatly. Sister Joan Chisister is one of those. And they focus every day on these things, creative work, holy leisure, stewardship, community, humility, and peace. It's a, just a model that I've hung on to, and that's in my comfort basket. I have a couple of quotes. You just can keep them on encountered paper. You can keep them on a three by five card. I won't pause to read them to you, but that is something to think about. And I think it's uh, important too to keep um, some three by five cards, maybe blank ones, but I keep two at a minimum, two of favorite scriptures in my basket. Uh, the first one I pick is my favorite of all time. I found it when I was 13. I lift mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord. That has been a profound comfort and just a reassurance over and over and over in my life. And the other one too is from Psalms 139, 13. Thus saith the Lord, who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord who has made all things. And so I keep scriptures, at least two, in my basket. And I know you all know about affirmation cards. I don't need to tell you what they are. So many groups use them. I keep all kinds, I change them out, kind of help me get refocused. When I was making this, I chose, I can choose compassion. That's a pretty important focus for me right now when I can easily get very angry at what I see on the news or very distressed, but I can choose compassion. I can find my way. I have found my way many times before. I am loved. And to think about God's love, my husband's love, my family's love, my friend's love, remembering that we are loved. And this card I never take out of my basket. It says, any emotion is okay. It's the behavior I choose attached to it that is important. That's a profound learning for me from years ago and a very gentle way to look at myself. Emotions are normal. What behavior am I going to choose to attach to it? Now I have two other little things to show you. We haven't talked about color. Color is important for a lot of reasons, but it's about sight. Sometimes it's about seeing. Sometimes it's about touching. Blue is my favorite color. And here is a blue bird of happiness. I've had it, I don't know, 20, 30 years, maybe more. But it's a blue bird of happiness. And that's the color of blue I love most. So there's color in my basket that I prefer. And this is also that beautiful color, but it adds just a twinge of humor and just a twinge of playfulness. Don't forget to put that in your basket. And this happens to be a dump truck with a man drilling concrete and a shovel and rocks. And I made a quilt for a cousin's first son, and that's the material I used to back it with. And so playful, my favorite color. Something to kind of say, don't forget there's a child in you to have a good time. And the last thing I want to share with you is something I put in my basket last week because it came last week. This is from our great grandniece, Charlotte. She's four and a half. She drew this totally by herself without assistance from her mother. And she drew us a butterfly. And she wrote her name at the bottom. I took a photo of it, sent it to her mother and said, we got it. Thank you so much. We both smiled and hugged each other thinking about you and your sister and your mom and dad. And I sent her a picture on the phone of this. Charlotte's charming response was, oh, it flew all the way there. The pure innocence of a child. I've got goosebumps just saying, it. sending me love, but then sending love in her response when I told her, I have your picture. So there's a whole variety. You make 
your comfort basket. I've given you way too many ideas. Just put four or six things in it to start with. No more than 10 maybe to start with. And start experimenting with having it where you can carry it, you can take it where you want it, you can take it outside where you can hear nature outside early in the morning when it's cool. Um, use it as you need, but gather it up to hold it in place so that you don't have to go searching for something to sit down and be with when you need a piece of comfort. Be still, listen. Listening is singing, and your life is the song. The most beautiful I know is the sound of your breath. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to listen to your breath, the very breath of God giving you life. And in closing, green is such a symbol of life. These green marble from months ago, when the mental wellness congregation idea was presented. This is a sign of green life, the very breath of God, the love of God that loves you, that loves us all. And let us let nothing stand between our awareness of that and how very precious it is. And to capture it, just stop and breathe and hear your own breath. Thank you.